Okay, today I want to talk about the differences between using the class syntax and the prototype syntax when working with JavaScript. Now, JavaScript does not have classes. It is not a class-based language. It's a prototype-based language. And that means that when you create an object, that object automatically gets a prototype. And if there's a property or a method that's not in the object, JavaScript will go to the prototype looking to see if that exists. So how does that affect what's happening with classes? So I'm going to take a look at the class syntax here, and then I'm going to look at how to do the exact same thing using just the regular prototype syntax. Okay, so we have a class called person C, person class. Uh, the C is just there to tell the difference between the class ones and the prototype ones, because I'll use the letter P at the end of those. So inside the class, for person C, we have a constructor method, and I've got another method called get details. Now the constructor is just going to accept a couple of arguments, a name and an ID. We're going to set those on properties using this, meaning when I call new person, like line 17 here, I'm calling new person, which is going to call the constructor function. It's going to run that function, and Bob and 123 are going to be passed in as the name and the ID. So they'll be set right here into those properties on this object. So there's going to be a bob.name and a bob.id. If we wanted to write those out in the console, we could just do bob.id or bob.name, and those would be written out. Now there's also this other method that we've created inside of the class called getDetails. All it's going to do is write out the name and the ID with a couple of colons in between them like that. Okay, so that's the basic syntax for a class. This method, what's actually happened is this getDetails method is being added to the prototype for this function. So the constructor, that's the function that's running when you call new person C. GetDetails is added to the prototype of this function. So we have a prototype and we have a constructor function. Great. Now, I want to create a brand new class that's going to extend person. I want to use these two properties and this method. I want to have access to all those things. So what we do is we create a new class called employee C. And this class extends person C. That creates the connection between the two of them. So everything that's inside of person is also going to be available inside of employee. We pass in three things here the name, the ID, and the salary. So name, ID, and salary. These are the three things that we're passing in here. We're creating a new instance of employee. We're putting it inside of this variable here. And there's going to be a method here. So employee info, this will exist on the prototype of employee C. So constructor, that's the constructor function that belongs to employee C. It's in the prototype, as well as employee info. It's also in the prototype. It's going to return all three values, so all three things. We've got get details that gives us two things, and we've got employee info that gives us three things. Okay, let's run this code and see what happens. So I'll open up my terminal. And I run this, and there we have it. We're getting get details. It's going to write Bob and one two three, and then Bob dot name was right there. And the ones down here for Numi, there's the three values. They're all being written out by calling employee info. Okay, so that's the syntax for creating objects and connecting the objects. When you're saying extends. What you're really doing is you are saying here the employee C prototype links to person C prototype. There's a connection between them, and that's where JavaScript's going to go. If you create an instance, if you create a, an object that is of type employee C, and you ask for a property or a function, it looks inside that object. If it doesn't find it there, it goes to the prototype for employee C. And if it doesn't find it there, it will go up to the prototype for person C. So that's what extends means. It's just linking, it's connecting the two prototypes. 
So how do we do this with just regular plain old JavaScript? Well, we're going to create a person first of all. So person p, and it's going to be a function. This is basically the constructor function that we had up above. So I'm, going to I'm just going to copy and paste the stuff that we had here, just so we can see it. So I'm going to copy that, come down here, and put it below just so we can see. Inside of here, we're going to accept two parameters, and then we're going to say this dot name equals nm, and this dot id equals id. And that's it. That is our constructor done. So it's the same syntax. It just Here's the function, and it is running the exact same thing as the constructor up above. Now that other one, the get details, let's copy this down here, just so we can see it as we're writing it. What we're going to do is we're going to say person p.prototype is going to get something called get details, and that is going to be a function. And it is going to return this copy paste. It's the exact same. It's just the way you're writing it is slightly different. But in the class, that's what it's doing behind the scenes is this is being interpreted as this code. Now the keyword this, all of these keyword this is throughout here, all refer to when you create something. So if I say let Fred equal new person P, I'm calling this function and I'm going to pass in Fred and 321. That's going to be his ID. I'm passing those two things in here and this is going to refer to Fred. When you call a function, any function in JavaScript, if you put the new word in front of this, this new says call this function as a constructor. It's changing the context. So automatically this function is going to return. I don't need a keyword return here. It's going to return an instance of this object. It's going to build an object and give it back to me that I'm putting inside of here. Now the extends, that's the next one. We had an employee. Um, or we can call the get details here as well. So we'll say console.log and then we wanted fred.getdetails. Save that and if I run it, there we go. There's the Fred 321, just like Bob 123. So those are the same. We didn't add the Fred.name. We could if we wanted. It would work the same way. Let's clear that out and run it again. There we go. So Fred 321, and then there's Fred.name. Fred.id is also available. Okay. Now extending it, adding that employee class. So we're going to say let employee, not C, but P, just to differentiate it from the one that's up above. It's also a function. Same as the constructor. So let's copy the constructor so we can make sure we're doing the exact same thing. Okay, now this.salary, we've got to put three things in here. So let's put those three values first. I can't call super. That keyword super is for use inside of the constructor of a class. It's That's just where that keyword belongs. But to do the exact same thing, we have to think about, okay, what is employee extending? It's extending person up here. So this is the function that I want to call. So I'm just going to say person p. That's the function that I'm going to call. Now, person is going to accept two parameters. We need to pass two things in here, the name and the ID. But in JavaScript, the method call requires one thing at the very at the very start. The first argument that you put inside of here is, what do you want to use as the context for calling this thing? Well, it's the employee. The object that employee is going to be creating, that's what I want to pass up here. So I want to make sure that these properties get added to the employee. So this, this is going to be our employee instance. And then we put in the name and the ID, just like that. 
and then we create that new property salary. So what we're doing here is we're creating a property called name and a property called ID on the employee object. We're borrowing those properties from person and we're creating them on the employee object and then we're adding a salary, a third property to this. And that's going to be our variable that we pass in salary. Okay, so there is the constructor function created. Now, the extends itself, we're actually using the keyword here extends. This is saying that there's a linkage between employee sees prototype and person sees prototype. Well, to do that, what we have to do down here is call object dot set prototype of and then it accepts two arguments. What is the object and what is the prototype? So employee P and it's going to use person P dot prototype. We're creating here the connection between the two of them. So this is effectively the writing of extends. We're creating that linkage between the employee class and the person class or the employee object and the person object. Those two are now linked together. So employee P is going to use the person P prototype. And that means it's going to get this get details method. Great. Now onto employee P's prototype, I want to add our method here, this employee info. So that was the final thing that we had inside this employee class was this method employee info. I need to add this here onto my employee P. So employee P dot prototype dot employee info is a function. And what does it do? It just runs this one line. It will return all of the details about the person and about the employee. There it is. That's it. That's the whole thing. Here is the person class. Here's the employee class, the extension of the person class by the employee class. That's, this is the exact same code as this. This behind the scenes is doing this. So at the bottom here, we can do those same console log statements. So we can write out our new employee. Oh, I guess we have to create one first. So let's say let uh, Mary equal new employee P. So Fred was a person. We're going to create an employee now and Mary and the ID we'll say 654 and salary well, let's say 65,000 and then we'll console log Mary dot employee info. We're going to call this method because Mary is an instance of the employee class. The employee prototype has the method called employee info. So we will call that save and come back here, clear this out and run it again. And there we have it doing the exact same thing. All right. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. I will leave a link to this finished code in the description for you. So there'll be a code just with this uh, finished code. And as always, thanks for watching.